What will the world look like if silver is squeezed into those ridiculously high numbers that we've heard about for so many years? $1,000 an ounce silver, $5,000 an ounce silver, in fact, some experts out there are predicting. It'll be a very different world for sure. Will it be a better one? Will the silver that you've got in your stack actually protect your wealth and lifestyle and well-being in that scenario? Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for this week's Precious Metal Rambling, which is going to be about what will the world look like and what will the market for silver look like if we actually get a thousand dollar an ounce silver. This is a magic number that has been bandied around for years. Certainly since I've been stacking silver, there's been countless videos and media outlets and news articles and blog posts advocating that silver is drastically undervalued and that one day it is going to skyrocket and we're going to get a thousand dollar an ounce silver. And the latest craze in that sense is the silver squeeze. It's happening again. We're seeing this resurgence of this movement that is going to cause silver to go to $1,000 an ounce, taking all that silver off the market, all that physical silver away, and then we get the true value of silver shining through. But what will the world actually look like if this stuff here is worth $1,000 an ounce or more? Some conservative estimates put it at $5,000 an ounce or more, depending on how you read the data and look at it relative to history, which I think is a bad way to look at it personally. But I'm not a financial expert. I'm not an investment guru. I'm not somebody who really knows much more than the common sense world, which I observe and have lived in and seen for this last five plus years of stacking silver and last 35, 40 years worth of my life. So there's a whole host of different opinions out there, different ways to interpret data. I'm not here to tell people that the silver squeeze won't categorically work. It could do. I just don't know. But what I pretty much know for certain is if we get a thousand dollar an ounce silver if we squeeze this stuff into oblivion there's going to be a particular reason why it gets that far i can possibly see silver being squeezed into the 30s 40s dollar an ounce perhaps even up to the 50 dollars an ounce and i do think if we get that to that level there'll be a very large amount of people cashing out and suddenly it'll be a it'll be a pump and dump there'll be a pump and dump scenario there'll be a load of people who big it up sell it at high prices, they cash out, job done, everybody else is stuck with very, very high priced silver. But if we get it all the way to that $1,000 an ounce mark, there will be a clear definition as to why, and that is because the currencies that we use to value this stuff, i.e. the dollar, will have inflated and inflated and inflated to almost nothing. If silver goes to $1,000 an ounce, then a loaf of bread will cost you $200 or well, whatever it would be equivalent of. It's it's a bit of a misnomer to think that if you do get to a point where you have squeezed silver enough or you've got enough silver in your stack to protect you from that eventuality, actually the world revolves on fiat currency and it, there isn't enough silver to go around to make it an effective means of monetary control anymore. The world has changed considerably since the times of the gold standard and using silver as coinage and money. Yes, silver is still an inherently valuable asset and monetary you know, institutions around the world value it significantly above other commodities. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the world that we live in is very, very different. And I have a feeling that the very, very long term for silver is simply going to be as this industrial metal, this industrial component, which it's moving more towards in this last 50, 60 years, we've seen it move categorically in favour of industrial demand. And that is, unfortunately, I feel the sort of long term future of it, whether it's replaced in some point by some kind of cryptocurrency blockchain as the kind of new silver, new gold standard um, will be up in the air. But if we get in the shorter term, I'm talking within the next few years or as some of the potential silver squeezers might want to believe in the next couple of months, if we get silver really squeezed to a huge high premium uh, on spot price, it, it's going to have some resounding impact on just other things going on in the world, other, other monetary kind of institutions around the world, and it's going to put pressure on industry, it's going to put pressure on uh, on governments and dealers and refineries and mines and mints, and I just can't see that really happening. Now, one of the big things that a lot of 
the silver squeeze movement, people might say, is that it's happened before. You saw the Hunt Brothers corner the market. Um, but there's a very clear reason why that didn't succeed back in the 1980s. I'm not really going to go into all the detail of the Hunt Brothers situation, but essentially they were shut down by essentially rule changes within you know, government controls of the markets uh, for very good reason. You know, it's, it's ultimately manipulating markets to one's own benefit. And the irony of a silver squeeze movement where you would actively want to sort of squeeze the COMEX or, or anything is that it is ultimately the exact same thing. It is manipulation. And a lot of the mantra around silver squeeze is sticking it to the banks that have been manipulating silver all this time. And you're doing that by manipulating silver again. Um, it seems a little bit counterintuitive to me, but um, that's kind of the way that I look at things. In addition, the, the, the big problem that I foresee with any kind of long term um, silver squeezing and giant gains in silver right now is it has to be a fundamental gain in the material value of the metal it can't just be a temporary oh we've bought up a lot of stock from dealers uh, and there's nothing else for sale right now because that's just going to increase the premiums there has to be some kind of fundamental paradigm shift with the way that we as a civilization as a as a planet almost interact and use silver uh, in not just investments but in industry and demand and supply and yes at the moment this is kind of a unique it's like a perfect storm of um, of course the kind of supply chain interruptions that we've seen because of the coronavirus because of the unique economic circumstances that the world finds itself in right now there are these circumstances by which certain dealers certain mints and refineries will have relatively short supplies of silver but that does not mean that silver is running out by any stretch of the imagination now another thing that I've heard over this last sort of five years of stacking silver is that silver is fast running out. We consume more silver than we bring out the ground every year. That's not necessarily true. Each year there are different amounts of silver that are brought out of the ground, reclaimed from uh, industry, from old bullion or what have you, and it's repurposed into the market. And then a certain amount is consumed, whether that be through investment or whether that be through uh, industry. And it's not always the case that you know less is coming out the ground than not. Yes, it's a finite resource. Of course it is. Every commodity out there, whether it be oil or silver or gold or platinum, uh, is a finite resource. And one day, yes, there might well be a big shortage of it. But for right now, the shortage is not necessarily an inherent shortage of silver coming out of the ground. It is just simply because coming out of the ground is being disrupted by the coronavirus and social distancing and mines wanting to hold back. Of course the mines want to hold back, save some money while they can, and then bring out all of their stock when they can. And that's the kind of, unfortunately, it's going to be a bit of a pump and dump scenario. So one of the things that I am most worried about, and this is why I'm talking up about silver squeezing. I'm not inherently against the idea of increasing silver prices and people buying loads of silver. That's great. I have loads of silver, as you can see, and I buy lots of silver for it for my business and I sell lots of silver. It's in my interest to have people buying silver. I like silver. I think people should buy silver. But what I don't necessarily agree with is the fact that a lot of people now are jumping on this bang mic and thinking that they're making a difference by buying 100 ounces of silver on the 1st of May, this silver raid thing that we've got going on, that it's going to make a difference, it's going to make a tangible difference. If you're buying from a dealer or if you're buying from a second-hand market, I see a lot of people posting photos of silver that they've bought off eBay. Well done, you've bought some silver off eBay, you've bought it from another private individual, you haven't actually affected the silver market in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, If you even buy from a dealer, dealers are essentially just private individuals but on a larger scale. They've bought stuff from the refineries, from the mints, and then they've passed on the costs, taken their cut, and job done. They work on economies of scale. They are able to say to the refinery or to the mint, look, I'm a big dealer, I've got buying power, I've got you know, 10,000 customers who will buy five eagles each on average per week, so if you give them to me at a bulk discount, I'll stop you from having to deal with all of the huge admin that goes along with having 10,000 buyers and shipping and postage. So the refineries do that, they make their money, and the dealers then make their money. Ultimately, that's not taking silver away from the physical market. That's just putting money in the pocket of a dealer. And yes, it takes money and silver away from the market in the sense that you now have that in your pocket and there's less silver for the dealers to buy. But ultimately, that's only if you ever keep it completely in your pocket and never sell that silver again. And yeah, there's going to be a very large amount of people who probably just sit on that silver for the next 
10, 15, 20 years. But I've seen so many people talking about if silver does get to $30, $40, $50 an ounce in the next couple of weeks and months because of the silver squeezing and the silver raiding happening over this next couple of weeks, that we might see quite a lot of people cashing out. And it's exactly the same premise as the GameStop stock scenario that we saw in January and February. There were an awful lot of people who were jumping on the bandwagon to make a quick buck. And that is what you'll see with silver. You are, yes, going to have a large amount of people buying a significant amount of silver, but at the same time, those people are real people who live in the real world, who need money to actually live in the real world. And especially when you see people who uh, are literally taking out massive loans or buying on finance or you know, going above and beyond their means, and they'll fall victim to their own petard by having to sell because they need to pay a bill or their car breaks or their boiler breaks or something like that. So this silver that is out there on the market that is supposedly now off the market forever, is never going to be taken, is a fallacy because there will be an awful lot of silver that is sold over the coming years from people who've bought it now. And, you know, that is perfectly acceptable. That is what silver is about. It's a commodity that you can lock your money away in. It's a savings mechanism for me as well. And I have no qualms about selling it. And if you want to silver raid and go and put money in the pockets of dealers at high premiums, be my guest. Go for it. That's fine. And do it for the right reasons, though. Don't do it because you think that you're going to make loads of money on this. Now, back to the original premise of what actually happens in the event of thousand dollar an ounce silver. Uh, if we do get what we want, if all of what I've just talked about there actually transpires to the point where it really, it, you know, has happened and I'm wrong. And I've, I, if, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, that's absolutely fine. I will be the first to admit here on YouTube, I'll make a video with me eating a little straw hat. I will literally eat my hat if I'm wrong, if we get a thousand dollar ounce silver. But in my opinion, that's just very unlikely. However, if we do get there and the monetary systems are to want of a better word, collapsed. We don't have the dollar, we don't have the fiat currencies anymore, and we are using silver. Is that really going to work? Is it actively going to work? And will the silver that you have in the form of a 10 ounce coin or a kilo bar actively help you in that situation? To a certain degree, I would say yes, it's always going to help you in those situations because you're going to have it as a financial uh, insurance policy as a, as a way to lock up and preserve that wealth. But it won't have necessarily made you a millionaire or a gazillionaire if you've ever thought that that's the reason why you're buying silver to get rich quick. Uh, I have unfortunate news for you that unfortunately that is really not a likely scenario. And whilst you might say, but a thousand dollar an ounce silver makes my, you know, one kilo bar bought at $30 an ounce worth a fortune. Yeah, you'll have a good on paper profit, but those numbers mean absolutely nothing when you actually convert it into the cash that you might need to buy things with at that time, whether it's a brand new dollar that's been created or whether it's an old dollar that you're using wheelbarrows worth of cash to go and buy. Uh, I have made videos in the past as well about how I think it's very unlikely that in a scenario like this, if we get sort of a complete financial collapse uh, of a institution like the dollar, that you would be able to pop down to your local shops and buy stuff with physical silver. Uh, I definitely think there'll be some that do that, but in the vast majority uh, in our modern world, uh, it, it's going to be about money. It's going to be about the things that people can use uh, to you know, buy other things down the line. Uh, it, there's a reason why we have fiat currency in this world. There's a reason why money has ruled the roost for so long. It, it is an easy intermediary thing. You know, you don't have to lug around a bunch of heavy metal every time you go somewhere. Uh, you know, fiat currency is easier to use and it's the, it's the norm that we live in. And to be honest, at that point that the world is in such calamity, uh, there's a very good chance that uh, you know sort of anarchy will have broken out, uh, rioting, uh, just looting everything. The world will not be recognisable. So that's the kind of, you know, the, the misnomer here that creating a silver squeeze to get, uh, you know, thousand dollar an ounce silver is is actually, in my opinion, just it's not something I want. It's really not. Do I want steady growth over time for my silver? Yes, and for those that squeeze silver for those reasons, I am completely on board and I will continue to buy my silver over this next decade in the same responsible way that I have and always will do. Uh, but will I go out and buy every single ounce of silver because I think there's a shortage and because mints are running out and because we're going to be seeing a huge, huge increase in price in the short term? No, I won't because I just don't think that that is a likely scenario. Now, I'm speaking from a 
position of luxury in the sense that I already have a significant amount of silver in my possession, in my stack, in my asset portfolio. And that is something that a lot of people don't necessarily have. And you get this last, this is the most, most important point. So thank you for watching this far if you have. So you, you get this sense of missing out, this fear of missing out, this FOMO, this uh, real need, I think, of a lot of people out there who are waking up to silver to catch up with other people. Uh, and if I was to tell you that the vast majority of the bullion pieces of silver that you see on the table here and that are in my stack and in my collection were bought at $16 an ounce, 13, £13.50 an ounce for some of these, uh, maybe not this one, which is a bit later on in the process, but you know, something like this, £13.50, £135 a 10 ounce of silver, which is what, maybe $160. You know, you look at the premiums that are on these things now, and I could quite happily cash that out for a very significant amount of money, but I'm holding for a long time because I want this stuff to protect my wealth. I want it to be there in the event of a rainy day, in the event, ultimately, that I'm wrong. You know, I've got assets in various different other investments, stocks, shares, uh, bricks and mortar and everything, and it's it's very much a case of having a diverse portfolio to protect oneself. That is the key, and that is what... I think I will say to all of you out there that you might start seeing more and more about silver and it's natural to have that fear of missing out and that desire, especially with silver. It, it is such an alluring prospect. Once you get your first piece, it is very addictive. Uh, you definitely want more, but just be very conscious of everything that's around it what it means to you financially to have this stuff, uh, whether it's something that's practical for you to, to you know, actually hold for a long term, that's the best results that you'll get from it. Now, this video, I'm sure, will rub some people up the wrong way, and that's absolutely fine. I'm more than happy to take constructive criticism where uh, appropriate, and I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section. However, if you're just going to tell me that I'm an idiot, uh, or a CIA, CIA PSYOP, or a shill, or um, oh God, loads of other random things that I've been told. I've even been called Australian, which is hilarious. Um, no offence to any Australians in the room. But, um, you know, that it is quite funny that there are a lot of very anti-realist world people, I think, out there. That the, the general kind of mantra from a lot of the silver squeezers who... Uh, quite frankly, can't consider the fact that they could be potentially wrong based on the evidence that's happened over the last 30, 40, 50 years of silver. Um, you know, that that's fine. If you don't want to listen, that's great. But don't be a troll, basically. You'll just get a one-way ticket to my ban section. If, on the other hand, you do have some constructive arguments to put forward, or if you want to share your thoughts and opinions on the topics that we've raised in today's video, then please feel free to do so down in that comment section, and I'll do my best to reply to all comments that I can see. If you've enjoyed this video, put a thumbs up on it and share it around on your social media. And if you are not subscribed, there's a little subscribe button down there. And if you have enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed, there's a good chance that you'll enjoy future videos that we make. Otherwise, that is it from me. A wonderful week to all of you ahead, I hope, and we'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.